I guess we do the intro. Yeah. The whole intro and then... Well, not that I remember the intro, but... Uh, it is... Welcome to the Arium Podcast and... Um, you know well enough to, to, to do it. Oh, do I? Welcome to the Arium Podcast uh, where we focus on cyber resilience. And we don't have a script in front of us today because, I mean, unfortunately, I am not that prepared. And today, Art and I are at GERCON in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Um, and so, Art, what is GERCON? Yeah, so it's a cyber conference and hacking conference, just like DEF CON, only smaller. So, yeah, we got these cool badges. <laughs> Cybersecurity events, they tend to like do 3D printing cool stuff. But yes, it is a cyber conference, a mini DEF CON. Think about that. So lots of hackers and cybersecurity professionals in the same place, working out, trying to sell to each other, number one, telling each other the latest tactics and the, the coolest trends. It's a way to stay up to date and way to network with other people. And as you can see, we are outside, so we may or may not be interrupted by people walking back and forth, but you get to enjoy this beautiful view behind us. Yep. We may shoot some stuff inside, you know, if we can wrangle some people that want to shoot some content, but uh, it's quieter out here. There's a lot <laughs> of inside noise of just hundreds of people, thousands of people in town for the conference, and it's definitely quieter out here. Here we might have a, a random stranger or a squirrel jumping us, but that's about it. <laughs> Yeah, and we have a lot of uh, partners that are actually sponsoring mm -hmm. right now, mm -hmm. like Fortinet and uh, Horizon 3 is a big yep. one. Um, there's a lot of people here that people would recognize the names, like Paul Alto Networks. Mm -hmm. And I, I think in general, like a lot of people try to come to Gurkhan mm -hmm. to network and really get to, new, uh, to know new products. Right? Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. And what's funny is in, in the lounge, I saw some security pros that I know from Twitter, from LinkedIn, right. uh, security pros that I've seen at Black Hat and DEF CON. Mm -hmm. So some of the seasoned ones that kind of do the conference circuit right. and do talks at all these conferences are coming, but there's a lot of locals. There's a lot of regional people just from the area that come. Uh, we flew in from across the country to be <laughs> here, but uh, it is a way to stay up to date. Like yeah. the talks you hear at these events, they're not gonna be repeated at the next one. Right. You know, so it's a way to stay up to date and understand what's going on in cybersecurity. Exactly. And I I mean, there were some really interesting ones. You were talking about one that you might go to tomorrow, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah. Jason Bevis from Arista Security is doing a talk tomorrow morning on how to use ChatGPT and other LLMs, how to create a bot for incident response, how to create a bot for uh, SOC analytics using uh, AI. So. Yeah not only just uh, the analytics part, but the response, yeah. you know, say, telling AI to do something with it mm -hmm. and uh, creating bots around that. So to me, that's phenomenal considering I think the next thing that really we need as a cybersecurity industry using AI is the response needs to be done by AI. Right. We're exactly. using AI really well on like detecting the threat. Mm -hmm. But once it's detected, it still has to like flag an alert to a dude. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, so having AI actually do the response mm -hmm. is a level up. So I'm excited for that talk. Yeah. And we have talked about AI in our work as well, which um, if you haven't seen that video, hopefully the little flag pops up right now that I'm going to reference <laughs> for the YouTube video, you know, putting it right here. <laughs> Anyways. Um, yeah, like AI is definitely a big thing that we've been covering and really have been um, just talking about in general. <laughs> and um, I, I think that's something that a lot of the vendors were even talking about too. Some of our sponsors that we, we talked to today, um, they were talking about how they use it for not only detecting, but also like actually addressing the issue. They actually go in and they automate everything so it's all in one place and they can like really have one specific view. Right, right. Yeah, yeah I think that is, is really what is groundbreaking about AI right now. Uh, normally, if like a bad alert comes in about something, it might take a SOC analyst a couple of hours to triage, right. spin up an incident response, 
figure out what to do with it. Mm-hmm. You know, it could be four to eight hours by the time something is actually right. legitimately done with this. Where if it's AI leading that charge, it could be seconds. Wow. And that's that's the kind of thing that we need. Obviously, there's so, there's some controls in place right now, like AI is new, so we're still figuring this out. <laughs> but um, once it's figured out, like our response time will be crazy fast yeah. using AI. Yeah. And I guess like going back to like why we are at GERCON, it should be noted that Arium is not a sponsor for GERCON this year. We have just uh, decided to infiltrate and speak to everyone, gain contacts and etc. But um, are, why, why are you specifically at GERCON? Yeah, so I'm trying to make new partners and, and meet new people. So one of the things about you know Arium is we have a really strong incident response presence. Right. We're really good at incident response, especially post breach recovery. Mm-hmm. So we're good at putting Humpty Dumpty back together to get again after an incident. And Arium's also really good at doing that pre breach stuff, like right. cleaning up their network mm-hmm. to make sure they don't get hacked, right. patching everything, that kind of thing. So. I'm here to really kind of spread the gospel of that and to tell people that, but uh, also to make new partners and make new new uh, you know, acquaintances in the industry that might uh, create a relationship later on. So it's the long game. It's networking. It's meeting people. Right. Nothing happens overnight, but uh, those relationships should just grow into making us stronger with incident response and giving us a, a, you know, more influence in the industry. Right. Um, yeah, so that's awesome. Like, we definitely you know, try to talk about what Arium can do for other companies a lot, and how, like, a lot of people think it we're just MSSP or IT or whatever. But in reality, we're kind of like, I think one of the phrases that I heard from the other vendors, how they view us, is we fill in the gaps. Yes. And we really come in and try to make sure that, like, we might not be like the specific like you know i don't know i don't i don't want to say we're not specifically disaster recovery right. but we we're coming in and really supplying whatever they don't have yes. or that they you know you can have someone find the issue but what if they don't actually fix it for you then what are you going to do right right yeah. um so that that's what i really like about hearing other people talk about us too like a lot of the companies once they know us they really know that we can help their company and help their business um and this is like our clients as well as our partners Mm -hmm. too um so i guess going back to like what i asked you for for me for myself as a marketing person i would not say i'm a very tech savvy person i still have to you know message our IT team like I clicked something what did I do <laughs> right um, but I think that you know coming to the Ger- uh, coming to Gercon and really seeing more in depth about what everyone is talking about what what's important to cybersecurity and like what's new that's a really big thing that I'm learning mm-hmm. and like it really addresses something of like Sometimes there's so many buzzwords and tech words out there that I need to know how to use for when we are talking about it, not only to our partners and stuff, but to our clients that may not know these buzzwords, right? And so learning more about like what these security professionals and the ones that are like actually in the trenches do, it helps me kind of come back and go to like the general public or our customers and say look this is what they're saying in simpler terms like this is how it's going to affect you and for you that's super important because you have to craft that message Mm -hmm. like we can geek out all day about the acronyms like in it and cybersecurity, there are more acronyms than the military like it is just crazy you have to know there's such a wide vocabulary of acronyms and terms in order to be successful in this and they're changing every day yes like there's new like gartner will put out a new abbreviation of some kind of oh, thing like every day so in order to really be relevant we have to come to these conferences and understand really what's new and you have to be able to deconstruct it in the human language Absolutely. so when we're talking about a casb you can be like cloud access security broker okay 
and then understand that okay, it's we're controlling access to cloud apps. Which you still need to explain more because, like, like, you know, exactly. what is cloud? What do you mean by manage it? And what's access? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And how does this fit in? Is this zero trust? Right. Like, and understanding really what's meant there. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, there there are so many things to learn, and it's constantly changing. It's it's almost. I mean, we talk about coding language, like even just understanding security language. It, it's like. It's, it's almost like, you know how like each generation has a new slang, a new mm -hmm. term or whatever? It's pretty much the same thing. You yeah. just gotta keep trying to keep up. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. When we're talking about yeets and it's such a total mood and yep. whatever, like mm -hmm. that, we're, we're, that is cybersecurity. We have, we have our, we're like our own genial language. Yep. yep. So, <laughs> I mean, art, it is 3.43. Uh, in the afternoon here in Michigan, we've been at GERCON for a couple hours now. You got right off the plane yeah. and came to the conference. So what do you, I don't know, what are your takes on the conference right now? Like, yep. just for So far, I've spent all my time with the expo hall, mm -hmm. talking to vendors. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of it's the same old thing. A lot of it's the same stuff, you know, same stuff from RSA, from Black Hat, the same vendors. Uh, but then you see some local regional stuff, and and when you hear about people doing talks on using AI, which is relevant, like ChatGPT has only been like public release for like less than a year. Oh yeah. So it's the fact that we're implementing it so well right now. Um, learning the, about that stuff in the Expo Hall was exciting today, and I, I feel sad that I missed out on some of the stuff. Like this morning was in the Executive Summit. Oh, yeah. Where I yeah. could have, you know, rubbed elbows with other executives. And, uh, you know, there were a bunch of talks. So it's like we're, we're making a decision to forego some of the talks in order to talk to sponsors and yeah. members. So, uh, but I think attending some of those talks is mm -hmm. something I'm looking forward to doing. Oh, okay. And, uh, you know, at least that one on AI. Mm -hmm. um, but in order to really see kind of what's out there, because uh, that, that, the talks that are being presented are that, that, groundbreaking new stuff. Right, yeah. People aren't getting talks on stuff that's been around for three years, four years. Yeah. The, the reason they got their talk slot is because they have something that's new. That's true, so, yeah. Yeah, so the yeah. talks are really an important part of staying relevant. Mm. I think I was most impressed by like, for me as a non-technical, technical marketing person, right? I was most impressed with how many different things were happening. It wasn't just like vendors talking about their products and everything. Obviously, they have like the little gimmicks of like, you know, there's this raffle or there's like Kinko and all that stuff. But there was also Dungeons and Dragons happening. Yep. Um, there was like, there's the, that locksmith like trying to pick it. The lockpick um, village. Yeah, yeah. That was really cool. And the virtual reality games yes. and stuff like that. That yeah. was a big one. Like, mm -hmm. I did not know what to expect coming in but I also didn't expect so many just entertaining things happening yeah. um, and they're so giving away beer they're you know? giving away a lot of beer there's quite a few drunk people yep I so, didn't expect that yeah so if you think about cybersecurity we're all a bunch of nerds right so and a lot of people are into gaming yeah. a lot of people are into DMV mm -hmm. you know so they're just trying to make it as entertaining as possible but um, you know so if you ever have a chance to go to a GERCON, DEFCON, a local B-Sides, you know, almost every city has a B-Sides, which is basically a small version of this. Um, take that opportunity and you'll get kind of a, an insight into that geek hacker culture. It's fun. It's fun to be around. Yeah. And I think the other thing that was really good, for, for me, this is my first time at a conference like this, um, and everyone was very welcoming and very like open to talking um there were actually a lot of students i thought that this was only going to be really like a bunch of companies talking to each other yep. you know executives rubbing elbows marketing people trying to talk to each other yep. but in reality there's a lot of like uh, there's a huge variety of people that came like there there were students from like as young as high school coming in there were, you know, people who just generally were interested in hacking and cybersecurity. There are legitimate hackers yeah. here. Oh, gosh. I didn't yeah. realize that. Yeah. Oh, wow. So, yeah, they do mm -hmm. capture the flags and stuff like oh. that and the competitions. Mm -hmm. 
But some people walk around with like a flipper zero and see if they can hack your phone. Oh, wow. Yeah, just for fun. Wow. Okay, well, I'm terrified for my phone now. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, okay, let's talk about the capture the flag thing. Mm -hmm. Because that was something that I didn't realize was just a game that people do. Yeah, yep. So, yeah, there, capture the flag, usually there's an objective. Uh-huh. You know, like Secure Works had one where you changed the song. Right. On their Spotify. Mm -hmm. Um, but there are others where they'll set up a server or set up a, a computer or a phone mm -hmm. and they'll set like a picture on it and and you win if you get that picture or you wow. win if you get this text file and you can read what's in the text file. Wow. Something like that. So there's an objective. Right. And then everybody tries to hack it. Oh. So then, you know, at these conferences, a lot of times there's several of those capture the flags and they right. give, they get prizes to who was able to hack the thing. I see. And so, like, I guess for more of a picture for the people who are not familiar with Capture the Flag um, in terms of hacking or, like, the people who aren't watching the video, Capture the Flag in terms of hacking is that they have a, like you said, a phone, computer, whatever set up, and they it's just the game of, like, who gets it first, yeah. right? Yep. Um, and so, like, and this is on display for everyone. Mm -hmm. So the Secure Works one, it was interesting because they had these bars that lit up um, from like red to green, different colors, and it would go up and down, up and down. And you would know that you fully hacked it, not only because the song changed, but because the bars all like lit up green or whatever. Yep. That's yeah, it would so celebrate, kind of like oh. ending the, the level on Mario and the fireworks are going right. off, yeah. you know, it's, mm -hmm. yeah, that's, that's it. And then uh, usually at these events, the, they'll give away uh, prizes at the end or something mm -hmm. where they'll say so-and-so won this, wow. this um, Capture the Flag. Mm -hmm. They call them CTS, Capture the Flag. Yeah. So, yeah. So have you done Capture the Flag before? No, no. Oh. <laughs> I love watching it, you know, I'm usually on the defensive side. Mm -hmm. Like, I have no offensive skills whatsoever. Yeah. I've never tried the, mm -hmm. you know, the hacking side. But, uh, you know, it's very interesting. It's fun. Yeah. I'm always watching people do it, and I'm thinking about, okay, what do I need to do to catch this? I see. If I'm a defender. Like, what what are they exploiting? What are the tools mm -hmm. are they using? You know, things like that. Yeah. So that's always interesting. Yeah, it reminds me of, like, I went to Santa Cruz for school, and, like, the UC systems, they all have, like, hacked songs. I'm sure, like, most colleges mm -hmm. yeah. have that, right? Um, but it makes me think about more, like, oh, dang, I should have, like, actually went in it or, like, been more of a participant or audience member or whatever, because, like, it seems really interesting now that I'm here and seeing it because there's so many people that get so excited by it they know exactly what they're doing or even if they don't they're like i have a theory yep and those are like the most fun at least for me to experience because it's like even if they don't know what they're doing going into it like they have so many thoughts and processes and they're firing off yep. so quick yep. yeah like uh, it's very much gamified which yes. makes a lot of sense because yeah. like you know, most hackers, they really like video games and stuff. Yeah. yeah. And if you think about penetration testing or attacking someone, it is mm -hmm. kind of a game yeah. to the attacker. Mm -hmm. You know, to be a de defender, it doesn't feel like a game, you know? No. <laughs> it feels like war and you're, you're right. getting decimated. But, uh, you know, see the attacker, it might be fun, you know, mm -hmm. to, to, oh, let's see how we can breach this defense. I got these ideas, you know, yeah. that kind of thing. So that's why, you know, hacking in general is kind of glamorous. Right. You know, because it's that fun, you know, it's, right. it's, it's obviously it's illegal, but it's, <laughs> it's, uh, don't do it. <laughs> it feels like a game to them. So that's why they, they like to do it. Yeah. But yeah, so CTFs are just a popular expression of that at these mm -hmm. conferences. I see. And like, I guess that's, that's why it's really important to do stuff like penetration testing too, where it's like, we're pretty much hacking you for your own good. Yeah, it's legal hacking. Yeah, yeah. legal hacking. We're making sure that, you know, if, you were to get into the system like what would they actually be able to steal what do you actually need to start looking to protect and everything yeah. and yeah so if you're gonna hack go into penetration testing instead it's legal absolutely <laughs> That's, you know being a, an ethical hacker is you know is something that's really popular in the cybersecurity industry right now everybody wants to learn to be a pen tester or be a hacker so right. it seems to be like the most attractive entry point for people mm -hmm. It's what people want to do because it's like you get all the accolades. Oh, I hacked this company. Yeah. You know, that kind of thing. But uh, 
you know, there's a lot of, for people, for those of you who are interested in getting into cybersecurity and listening, there's a lot of things other than penetration testing that are, um, you know, opportunities to get in there. You know, SOC analyst is one, but it may be boring. Um, <laughs> but, you know, there's a lot of things in sort of response where, incident response you feel like you're on the SWAT team you feel like you're you know an EMT or you know running to the rescue to save yeah. a company you feel like you're a hero and uh so they literally say call to arms yeah. when they're asking for help or something yes. right like they yeah. literally say call to arms like you're going into battle exactly exactly it's very tactical you know feeling you know and and so you know there's a lot of places for different people in cybersecurity, but uh but yeah you're right um, penetration testing is kind of the, the attractive one that yeah. everybody wants to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I guess um, just to kind of wrap up, um, today's going to be a shorter podcast because we, we are in public and we are at a conference. We would like to get back into the, the chaos of things. Um, how, how are you feeling about GERCON? How are you feeling about like talking to all the vendors and everything? Yeah, I, I'm excited to hang out with them more mm -hmm. to uh, to party with them tonight and see what the, yeah. what they say when they're a little looser. <laughs> um, you know, I think it's a good opportunity to network and, and make acquaintances. Yes. And even when they're the non-vendors, even the cybersecurity pros that are yes. at the net, mm -hmm. like uh, getting to know people because, you know, some people just may be head of security at XYZ right. company. Mm -hmm. They're not sponsoring here, but they have a lot of valuable things to know. Yeah. And it's a good connection to make. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I feel the same. Um, I mean, I am really curious what's the, what the happy hour and like after party, that kind of stuff is gonna look like. But in general, I think I've been just openly curious about everything that's happening. Like, I, I don't know how to best describe it to an audience who's never been to one of these conferences. Well, I'll say when you go to more, when you go to different ones like RSA, mm -hmm. very different feel. RSA is very corporate, so it's oh. like you're wearing a suit and you're walking around being polished, salesy, I see. you know, all marketing hype, yeah. you know, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And there's a lot more alcohol too. Like, <laughs> it's, um, but like, Black Hat is kind of, oh, it's still corporate, but it's you have more individual contributors and less marketing team. Mm -hmm. um, but then DEF CON mm -hmm. is just like a bigger version of this. I see. Where it's, you have know, thousands and thousands of hackers maybe, you know, coming to town. Wow. You know, and, and so it's 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 just a very large version of Bird Mod. I yeah. see. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you everyone for tuning in. Um, check out our podcast. It comes out every other Wednesday. Um, if you want more information from Arium, check out www.arium.com and Art and Vivian signing out from Grand Rapids, Michigan.